Hi, my name is Blake Huffman. Here's a few things you might want to know about me. I have lived in the suburbs of Ramsey County my entire life. I went to the local schools. I even went to a local college, Bethel, where I met my future wife, Arden Hills native Joy Danielson. We married after our third year at Bethel, and a few years later, children arrived. Alex, Noah, Zach, Carl, Eli, and Will. Yes, six boys. In the past few years, Alex married Amber, and Noah married Stephanie. Granddaughters Grace and Becca arrived in the years following. All in all, we're a pretty average family. Since college, I worked at various financial institutions, eventually becoming a vice president at Wells Fargo. Wanting to be more involved in the community, I was elected to Shoreview City Council in 1996, and in 2012, was elected to the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners. After serving in the public sector the last two decades, one might think I'm well known. Well, that's not the case. So I thought I would create a show that shared with you things that are important to me and others that live in Northern Ramsey County, hopefully having a little fun along the way. Hi there, I'm Blake Huffman. I'm Ramsey County Commissioner of District 1, which is the northern suburbs of Ramsey County. Today with me, we have County Sheriff Matt Bostrom. Matt, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Blake. Matt, let's start with, you're just wrapping up year four. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us how the first four years have gone, lessons learned, and, and uh, things that, uh, that, that you feel real glad about accomplishing in year four, in years one through four. Well, you know, when you ask it that open, yeah. I could, we could be here for a while because I'm so <laughs> excited about so many things that have happened. Maybe your top yeah. three. Top three. All right. Um, in no particular order, uh, one of the things that we've been able to accomplish is really maintaining a focus on key, key things. One is the state constitution and the United States Constitution. Why does the sheriff's office exist? And that becomes the heartbeat of why we do our core activities. And then, so that's the what we do. But how do we do things? Maintaining our focus on what our values are, and that is practicing the best in community policing, collaborating with other public safety partners, making sure that we're fiscally responsible, that we never overspend the people's money, that we reinvest in our community by coming alongside youth and reinforcing positive behavior, right. making sure that uh, we improve our services through the use of quality technology. Those ultimately become the key things. And, and then lastly, to make sure that we become a public safety agency that looks like the community that we serve. That's great. Sheriff, a lot of people um, uh, might have a police department in their city, mm -hmm. and now there's a Ramsey County Sheriff. Talk about where you are the sole police uh, sure. presence, and then how you partner with the cities that have their own police department. Okay. It, it, that's a commonly asked right. question. I think a lot of people think they should know what the Sheriff's Department does and how that overlay works with local government. And, but they're afraid to ask. And so I'm glad you asked. Um, one of the things for the cities that don't have police departments is very common in the United States for them to uh, contract for those services with their local sheriff's department. The difference between a deputy and a police officer is a police officer has the authority to make arrests in the community that they are sworn in, where they carry the badge and have that patch. Whereas a deputy is a police officer in every city. They have that authority, that, that police officer authority in every community. So primarily then in Ramsey County, there are seven cities that we serve as the police department, about 60 square miles, about 80,000 people. Uh, what, so that's our primary role. Somebody calls 911 and we respond just like you would expect a law enforcement officer to respond. Mm -hmm. The other side is, is that what's our responsibility then to the communities that have their own police department? Mm -hmm. So back to that concept, if we are practicing our values, and that is not competing with local law enforcement, we're there to support those cities. So for instance, in the city of St. Paul, it's not a competition between my office and Chief Smith. I want Chief Smith and the St. Paul Police Department to be wildly successful, because last time I checked, that's good for Ramsey County. Absolutely. So my role then is, is to support him and his community policing initiatives to be able to come alongside and to be a trusted partner. Maybe another way to look at it is, is we're the cavalry. If any of our communities that have police departments ever need help, they need to be able to count on the sheriff that the best are going to be able to come alongside and support them in their efforts. And the contract cities, the seven uh, uh, areas that you uh, are contract, contracting to protect, Six of those, I believe, are in District 1. Mm -hmm. Why don't you rattle yes. off uh, your So your you want me, you're going to test me. I'm going to test you. All right, Question so one. it's Arden Hills, okay. Shoreview, North Oaks, Vadnais Heights, Little Canada, Gem Lake, and White Bear Township. Very good. So, very good. Thank you, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. That was uh, yeah. you, you passed the first test. <laughs> the, um, 
the, the department is going through a change right now. The yes. legislation had uh, encouraged, uh, was written, that had the result, anyways, mm -hmm. of encouraging people that were close to retirement to retire. Right. So you've got a whole new batch of recruits coming in. Talk about that and, and what you're doing to make sure that they're looking like the community and acting in, in a way that uh, represents mm -hmm. you and your force. Yeah, that is something that I'll, I will want to talk about. One of the things we're very proud about is what we're doing in selecting for character and training for competence. Mm -hmm. But we'll come back to that point. Um, what you're referring to is in the PERA, the Public Employees Retirement uh, Fund, what has happened is, is that there was a change in the police and fire fund. And what that meant is, is if people wanted to retire under the old rules, they had to retire by the end of, make it effective by June 30th of this year. So what you saw in many police agencies is those folks that were between, that were over 50 had a decision to make under which plan they wanted to retire. And so there was uh, an increase in what was the normal retirement rate due to that change in, in the pension plan. And so our agency uh, didn't affect us as much as I thought it would, but uh, we're in the process of hiring 18 deputies right now. They started their academy on Monday. And then the, f the week before we started 16 corrections officers. 34 so new we've got uh, 34 new public deputy. safety f folks Fabulous. running simultaneously in two, two academies right now. That's, yeah. that's, uh, where, where do you get recruits from? Most of our, rec most of our recruits are all coming out of, um, so why don't I look at it in certain two ways. One, the corrections folks. Our, our corrections folks could be coming from other detention facilities could be from the Department of Corrections. Some are coming, there's our soldiers that are coming back that mm -hmm. have found this as a place where the, they want to plug in. This mm -hmm. is another way. They've been used to safety issues, so coming in in this way. The other place that we have are men and women that are criminal justice majors, that they're, they, they may want to go into law enforcement someday, but they see this as an opportunity to contribute in public safety. So it seems like that's the general population where we get uh, folks to come in and work in our detention environment or a corrections officer. Yeah. The flip side now, what we have in our most recent academy, I'm promoting nine people from our detention center okay. who are correct, currently Ramsey County employees. Uh, they're criminal justice certified or post-certified peace officer standards and training. We're promoting them to deputy. We have eight uh, uh, um, folks coming in that are police officers in other cities that are coming to work here with us. Is it eight, seven or eight? Two, three, four, five, seven. Uh, we have seven coming in that way that are coming in from other agencies that work alongside us, uh, coming in with previous experience, major departments. I mean, everywhere from one of our local communities here, uh, also from Phoenix, we've had previously from Dallas, wow. and now recently from South Carolina, from the Charleston County uh, Sheriff's Department down there. So wow. it's pretty exciting to see the talent that's coming in. And then we've got a few other members from the community that came in. Uh, out of that standard posting that you typically do now hiring mm -hmm, and you get mm -hmm. hundreds of people out we only took two off that list yeah. interesting the uh, let's talk about public safety up in the northern suburbs mm -hmm. talk about what your officers or your deputies would see on an average day is it is what are, what are the crimes what's trending what mm -hmm. are you on the lookout for uh, one of the things that and this has been true my entire career. It usually surprises people when I tell them. Now I could, it, for those that know my history, I spent quite a few years with the St. Paul Police Department. And if I was at a community meeting there 20 years ago, and I go to a community meeting today in, let's say, Shoreview, and I say, what's the number one issue that you have? It will be traffic. Is that right? It will always be traffic. And, and so now it could be speeding cars, loud mufflers, uh, unsafe conditions, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, the things that come after that, what's second, third, and fourth, that shifts based on the community. But it's always traffic. What are some of those yeah. two, three, and four items that you would Some see? of the two, three, and four items. So if, I would, if we were going to be uh, talking about our, our issues in the, in the northern suburbs, I would put next in that issues associated with theft, particularly theft from auto. Sure. All right? And safety in and around our parks those become the, the next area where we're having the most trouble. And I think it surprises people uh, why this is very important. And I, and I hope those that are viewing this today will understand that when that happens to them, please call. A lot of people think, oh, it's a low order crime. Why would the deputies care? We care because it gives us indicators of crime patterns. This mm -hmm. helps us police better. And the other thing is, is that I can't always catch drug dealers dealing drugs, but here's what I know. The people that are stealing out of cars are doing it to support a habit. 
So if we want to somehow uh, change some of the drug behavior out there, if we can catch some of these people that are breaking into cars, maybe I can't catch them for the drugs, but I can catch them for theft. So the next question I was going to ask, I think you've already <laughs> answered that, is what can people do? And mm -hmm. you've already said call yep. when, when something mm -hmm. happens, even right. if it's smaller, mm -hmm. call. Right. You know, and other things that people can do in, uh, in their daily lives that help law enforcement? Well, one is call. You, see, you know, you hear that axiom, see something, say something. And people still, oh, I don't want to bother the deputy mm -hmm. over this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to bother the police officer. Should I call 911? Well, let me just say, yes, you should call 911. If it looks not quite right to you, that's enough. Let us go check it out. That's what you're paying us for. We don't mind doing that. Our deputies Great. don't mind following up. And because you're the one that really is closest to it. If it's in your neighborhood, you're going to know first, even before that deputy that patrols there all the time, you're going to know first whether it's not supposed to be that way. Call us. We'll check it out on your behalf. Happy to do it. Um, the other thing is think ahead. Yeah. When you're going to the market or the park or wherever it is that you're going with your car, don't get out. I, I've had some people where they get out of the car, and I was going to say, don't get out of your car, take your belongings, lock them in the trunk, and go in. All right. So let's say we went, I'll play this out a little bit. What I've mm -hmm. seen people do thinking, oh, wait, I don't want to leave this in the seat of my car. I'm going to lock it in my trunk. So they'd go to one of our area lakes and they park their car. They get out, they lock their stuff in the trunk, and they start for a walk. Okay, if you're a bad guy, how long is it going to take before someone's going to be back to that car? About 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. They already know. They can start the clock and say, I've got 20 minutes to figure out how I'm going to get into your car. I don't know where everybody else kept their stuff, but I know what's valuable to you, valuable to you is in your trunk. All right, so anytime we just think ahead before you get out of your car and don't leave things in the front seat, don't leave it in plain view, and make sure that you don't give clues when you get out of your car where your valuable property is. That uh, sounds like it's common sense, well, but planning ahead. Well, it kind of is, and, and you know the people that... It happens to are those that said, oh, I always do it this way. And then today, I didn't think it was that big a deal because I was just running in for a minute, so I did it this way. Those are the days That's that the day. it, it hurts you. Yeah. Earlier, you mentioned when you hire you, uh, and, and broadly speaking, you have men of character, women mm -hmm. of character right. on your force. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and how you're able to instill that and how you're able to, uh, to kind of focus on that really key attribute. Well, this is one of those things that goes back quite a few years that we was part of uh, some research that we did when I was with St. Paul. And what we discovered that if you hire men and women that have character, you don't run into the issues of racial profiling, you don't run into issues of violating the Constitution or anything else. And so that was a request from the community saying, you know, we want to continue to build trust and rapport. We want men and women of character. And they gave us 15 character traits of what they thought that looked like. And they said, if you hire men and women like this, you don't have to train them to be aware of racial profiling, they won't stand for it. In fact, if they see it, they would stop it. They wouldn't see if they wouldn't stand for someone bending bending laws that ultimately end up going to the Supreme Court for decisions because they don't dance near the edge. They do things right, they do things in a in in, in a transparent way and, and they're easily trusted. So what happens with most people is is that they decide, well, I know character when I see it. And we said, well that's true, but there's characteristics. And so what we've been able to refine over the last 10 years is attributes associated with character. And ultimately, they center around four main principles of trust, trustworthiness or truth, responsibility, respect, and honor. And when we look over a candidate's background, we're looking to see, do we see those things repetitively in their life from the time that they're in high school and college, their work? Can we name things that show honor, that show responsibility, that show respect, that show truthfulness? We look at it through the psychological screening. We look for it as they're going through the training process while they're learning skills because I believe I can reinforce character. I can't train it into somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can train skills so that when the men and women leave our academy, they have the highest in both. We've reinforced and selected based on the best we know about character and we've trained them to the highest skill level. And so that's what we're doing. And in fact, uh, there's, there's growing interest uh, you know, in the region and even this last summer uh, we were asked to present at the National Sheriff's Association mm -hmm. on this particular topic. To, to how do you make this actionable as opposed to being a concept? And that's where we're going with the men and women that we hire and how we train. That's fascinating. You talk about character and, and uh, patrolling and traffic is the first, uh, kind of the number one issue that's out there. When, when the citizen is driving and, and sees a squad car because they went too fast or whatever, what are some, what's some advice that they should do? They should... What should they do? 
Well, obviously, pull over. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. When the lights <laughs> and the siren come on, pull mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 now I'm not going to say that this is what all police officers and deputies do. I have to say, when I pulled somebody over, mm -hmm. I kind of had a three strikes rule. If, if I'm in a marked patrol car and you make th three driving errors right in front of a marked car, I'm so, I have to pull you over. You're oblivious mm -hmm. to your driving. Mm -hmm. um, and what I ended up finding is, is when someone did make a mistake and I'd go up and I'd say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Officer Bostrom, and I'm stopping you because is there a reason for that? And they would say, you know what, I am so sorry. I, I, I made a mistake. I did. The, that was so refreshing to me. Mm -hmm. I usually let them off with a warning. As long as everything else, they had their, their insurance and everything else, I, I'd let them go. Because I was so accustomed to people saying, you know, officer, I have no idea. I don't even know what you're talking about. I didn't know what the speed <laughs> limit was. It was an accident. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, the dog ate my homework. I mean, it was a variety. It was kind of every, mm -hmm. I'm late for this. I drive, This is my neighborhood. A lot of excuses. It, it was irrespond either they were not telling me the truth or they were oblivious to their driving. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm asking for people is if you made a mistake, it's not an end of the world. Remember what law enforcement is doing, particularly my deputies. What they're doing is, is we're not there to make money off from this. We're there to keep our community safe. For many, many years, Ramsey County led the state in not in accidents, but also in property damage and loss of life. We are trying to do what we can. And one of the ways that we can do that is to be strategic in how we enforce traffic laws. I want you to say yeah. that again. Mm -hmm. Ramsey County, unfortunately, yes. has been leading in, in many categories. Say those yeah. again. So that would be uh, property damage and uh, loss of life, okay, and injuries. And so over the years, we've been able to do some joint traffic work with, instead of it being a, tra a county issue where it's just deputies or R Roseville or Maplewood or St. Paul, we've got together as a team and we look at these traffic corridors and are intentional about stopping cars and slowing them down. And what we've seen now is a tremendous reduction in both the number of accidents, the number of people injured, and the number of people, the number of fatalities. And it's because we've taken a joint approach. Back to my theory that if it's good for St. Paul, it's good for Ramsey County. If it's good for Ramsey County, then it's good for these other cities. So uh, it's really been a real uh, a positive thing for us. So back to what should someone, if you get stopped, it, Look, it's not an end of the world. It happens to people. Mm -hmm. There could be a reason things happen. If there's a legitimate reason, explain it to the deputy, the officer. The one thing you sh there's a few things you shouldn't do. Okay. When the when the deputy or the police officer is walking up, especially at night, don't start fumbling around inside the car, reaching under your seats and reaching across to the and and, and fumbling around with your hands. Just wait for the officer to get up there because and just rest your hands on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. In fact, if flip your dome light on do them a huge favor because what that tells the officer is, is you're not a threat. You know, the hundreds of people that we stop at any given time, you know, over a, sh over a period of a couple shifts, mm -hmm. um, just knowing that because at first they have to determine friend or foe. And I think, you, you know, you look at the headlines and you see how many officers have really negative encounters with mm -hmm. the traffic stops. Mm -hmm. And so we're trained to measure that approach. And if we have somebody that has the, the, the lights on inside that car and they're resting their hands and they make eye contact with you, that, that's, that goes very, very smoothly for everybody involved. So just little things like that are, are helpful to everybody's safety. That's excellent. You mentioned one of your core values is uh, supporting youth. Mm -hmm. um, we just had National Night Out, not yeah. to, or Night to Night rather, uh, just a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, talk about what the department is doing related to youth and, and connecting with youth. We have a variety of uh, initiatives. One, um, and these are in no particular order, we, are, we have uh, almost a dozen people involved in our school resource officer mm -hmm. program, and we do that in cooperation with uh, uh, School District 916, Roseville Area Schools, as well as Moundsview. Mm -hmm. And, and I expect my school resource officers not to be the school bouncers. They are actually a resource to that school. Can they do enforcement? Sure. But their responsibility is to be a, a full community member and an educator when they're in that environment. So that's one. Two is, is that frequently we were called upon to go out and read with children. I just did it myself the Good. other day uh, over on the west side of St. Paul with the county attorney. We were over there reading to some summer school students. We have a variety of students that are uh, staff that go do that. We have some participating in mentoring programs over on uh, the west side of St. Paul. And we also do some things, uh, gang there's a gang reduction program, a tattoo removal program that we work with folks to help kids get out of gangs. 
And then uh, another example is just this summer, we took some, er some kids from St. Paul and brought them out to Bald Eagle Lake and had a fishing competition. Oh, wonderful. And we did this in cooperation with the St. Paul Police Department. So as far as many of those kids knew, they were up at Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. That's as far as they've ever been mm -hmm. out of the city, and that's the biggest lake they've ever been on. And in many cases, first time they've held a fishing pole and been out on a boat. That's great. And they were alongside our sheriff's deputies. So they built some camaraderie, Abs they, yes. they're familiar, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see that in Ramsey County, we're blessed. We've got a, a wonderful county uh, uh, sheriff in Matt Bostrom. Let me end our conversation with just a few questions so we can get to know the sheriff better. Sheriff, a lot of people when they're younger, especially boys perhaps, want to be a policeman. Mm -hmm. Now you turned out to be a policeman. What did you want to be when you were a young child? Well, of course I wanted to play professional football. There I you mean, go. of course I wanted to do and that. Who was your hero? It was, well, the Minnesota Vikings. I was a huge fan of uh, the Purple People Eaters, Wonderful. that defense with Alan Page and Carl Eller and uh, Jim Marshall. I, I thought those guys were fantastic. And then, well, physically, when you don't get, uh, can't quite make it to six feet tall, you kind of figure out there might be something else God wants you to do. Uh, and I was going to be an engineer. I left okay. high school, uh, went to the uni ultimately spent time at the University of Minnesota. Uh, studying engineering, did a couple internships out at 3M. In the mix of all of that, I f it seemed like that was work I could do, um, but didn't seem like that was the work I was supposed to be doing. And along the way, took uh, an open examination for the St. Paul Police Department, finished high enough, and uh, ultimately that's where my career started. Now, uh, law enforcement is in my family. My father was right. a police officer, he was a career law enforcement mm -hmm. officer with St. Paul. But his advice to me was, hey, there's other jobs out there, don't worry. So I, I really had put police work out of my mind from a very early age. It wasn't anything I was opposed to, but Dad said, think about something else, so I did. And then it was interesting how life kind of, that boomerang, where it ended up coming right back right to back. that, and it's uh, found it to be tremendously purposeful work and been very fortunate to be serving in this capacity. You might have already answered my second yeah. question, that is your favorite Minnesota sports team. Well, it's the Vikings, but you know, long term, mm -hmm. it has been the Vikings. I, I love the Twins, I like the Wolves, but I have come to, if I had to rate my favorites today, it's going to be the Minnesota Wild. I like what they're doing, I like the way they play, they play with passion and heart, and uh, every single night they go out on the ice, I feel like they played as hard as they could, and if they, if they win, they win, and if they don't, they don't, but nonetheless, they played as hard as they could, and I'll, I admire that any time I see that in any I, team. I think that's a great answer. Yeah. Do you go to the State Fair? I do go to the State What's Fair. What's your favorite booth at the State Fair? <sighs> favorite booth at the State Fair? Let me, let me think about that. Um, my wife and I have a route that we take, and interestingly enough, my wife and I, I know we're supposed to be too old for it, but we, we do go over over to the uh, the Miracle of Birth. We always have to walk the deck there. Very it's just, good. It Very can't good. help it. We always do that. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you're going to ask me that, but favorite food. Yeah. It's, well, we have to go get Tom Thumb Donuts right Very after good. that. Very good. And then on the heels of that, uh, the last year we tried some of those deep fried pickles. Mm hmm that was crazy, but I actually like those. There we go. Those are very good. Yeah. There we go. And lastly, your favorite place uh, to eat or your favorite type of food? Let me ask you that. If you're going to go to a restaurant. My favorite type of food. Um, you know, if I can go out and have a, a, a really good steak and a baked potato with that, that is, that's fantastic. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, good. well, now we get to know the sheriff a little bit better than we did before. Great answers. You're doing some great things. Your deputies are doing great things, and uh, they're just a really an asset to the community. So thanks, and we'll see you again next time.